So Nikon this morning have just announced two brand new full frame mirrorless cameras, the Z6 and the Z7. Well, we weren't expecting that, were we? So obviously it's been rumored for a fairly long time that Nikon were going to be releasing these two cameras. We knew roughly what the specifications were gonna be and we knew when the announcement date was going to be. Well, we've now had the official announcement. Now, Nikon had already kind of alluded to, and it's fairly obvious where these two cameras are aimed at. They're aimed primarily against the Sony a7 III and the a7R III. But from what I've seen at the tech specs and the preview so far, they do seem like pretty competent cameras. Are they better than the Sony's? I'm not entirely convinced. Well, in terms of the body size, they're pretty much what we expected. They seem to be fairly similar to the Sony's. They seem to be a slightly bit bigger. The grip seems to be a little bit larger. The grip seems to be more like the size of a mid-level APS-C DSLR or something like a D610. Now, this might be a benefit for a few people. I've seen quite a lot of people who've slated the Sony body for having too small a grip and it not being comfortable to use. I personally don't mind the a7 III camera body. I like the size of the grip. Would I complain if they made the grip slightly bigger? No, but is it a deal breaker as it currently is? Not in the slightest. So if you're somebody who's been particularly put off by the size of the grip on the Sony cameras, then I think you'll like the size of the grip on the Nikon Z cameras. In terms of the ergonomics, I'm kind of speculating on this. I'm not a Nikon shooter and I've never been a Nikon shooter. I have tried other people's Nikon cameras in the past and I just didn't particularly like them. Um, I found the, the buttons weren't particularly intuitive compared to what I was used to. I'm not saying I wouldn't have gotten used to it. You know, if I'd bought a Nikon camera, then I would have eventually learned the button layout and got used to them. But no Nikon camera ever enticed me over to them compared to what I was used to. They did come close with the D850. That is probably as close as I've ever come to considering switching to Nikon. So I've never particularly taken to the ergonomics of a Nikon body, but from what I've seen of these new Nikon Z cameras, the button layouts do seem pretty similar to those of the current Nikon DSLRs. So if you are a current Nikon shooter and you're looking at getting these mirrorless cameras, you're not going to have any problems in just picking it up and shooting straight away. Now, some plus points of the Nikons versus the Sony's. Firstly, the touchscreen. It seems like Nikon have actually put a fully functioning touchscreen onto both of their new cameras. The Sony's are touch capable screens, but they only have touch functionality for moving autofocus points around. You can't use them for reviewing your pictures and zooming in and punching menu options and stuff like that. It is something that I wish Sony had put on their cameras. I'm sure they will put it on the next generation of cameras but it does seem like Nikon have done it on these cameras now, so thumbs up on that one. Also, the viewfinders. The Nikon cameras both use the same viewfinder, which is a 3.7 megapixel resolution electronic viewfinder, which is very similar to the resolution found in the Sony a7R III. The a7 III, however, uses a lower 2.5 megapixel-ish resolution EVF, which is the same EVF that they used in the second generation of A7 cameras. Now, in terms of direct comparisons between the Nikons and the Sonys, the Z7 is a 45 megapixel resolution sensor versus 42 megapixels of the Sony A7R III. The Z7 shoots 9 frames a second versus 10 frames a second of the Sony. The Nikon has 493 autofocus points versus 425 of the Sony. The Nikon shoots up to ISO 25600 versus ISO 32000 of the Sony. Both cameras will also do 4K full frame up to 30 frames a second and 1080 up to 120 frames a second. So both cameras are pretty well matched in those regards. Where I think there's a difference is between the Z6 and the Sony a7 III, and this, I feel, is the more important battle that Nikon need to win. Because the Sony a7 R3 is a good camera, is quite a popular camera, a lot of people are shooting with it, but the Sony a7 III is the camera that has absolutely blown the camera market wide open. I mean, that camera's been on the market for four months now, and there are still people who cannot get hold of it. There is still a backlog of orders for people who want the camera because it offers so much functionality for such an affordable price. It's in a price bracket that's low enough for a lot of amateur and hobbyist photographers, but offers performance good enough for professional photographers. So it's been a huge, huge success.
And this is the area of the market I feel is more important to Nikon because they're likely to sell a lot more units of the Z6 than they will of the Z7. So it needs to be good. How does it stack up to the Sony a7 III? This is a bit more tit for tat. Both of them are roughly 24 megapixel resolutions. The Sony will shoot 10 frames a second. The Nikon will go up to 12. Now, I don't know if there's any stipulations as to what you need to be shooting in to get that 12 frames a second, if it's only compressed raw or if there's a particular setting that it will only work with, I don't know. Maybe it will shoot 12 frames a second regardless, which would be great to see. So if you're somebody who's considering getting this camera and you're thinking of maybe shooting a lot of fast action stuff like sports and wildlife, those extra two frames a second might not seem like much, but it's 20% faster shooting, which could be a game changer for you. But fast shooting speed is only half of the equation. You also need good autofocus, and this is where there might be a bit of a difference. See, the Sony a7 III takes the 693 autofocus point system directly from the Sony a9, which is their flagship sports camera. The Nikon Z6, however, only has 273 autofocus points. Now, does only having a third of the number of autofocus points mean that the autofocus system is only going to be as third as good? No. Nikons are pretty well regarded for having atrocious sensor-based autofocus in their DSLRs. However, I think Nikon will have up their game for these cameras because this is the only autofocus system that is in the cameras. It's not like they can rely on a separate autofocus system like they can in a DSLR. So I think Nikon will have paid a lot of attention to how good the autofocus system is. Is having 400 less autofocus points in the camera really going to make that much of a difference? Probably won't make a huge difference in the greater scheme of things. I mean, let's be honest, DSLR cameras like the 1DX Mark II, flagship sports camera, only has 61 autofocus points. Where I think the difference in autofocus points really shows up is more to do with the autofocus function that is missing from both of these Nikon cameras, and that is the eye autofocus because the Sony cameras have eye autofocus, which works absolutely phenomenal. And having close to 700 autofocus points across the frame means that that eye can be tracked absolutely inch perfect. But the Nikon doesn't have eye autofocus, so it doesn't need to be able to track quite so precisely compared to what the Sony does. It still has face detection, but it doesn't have eye autofocus, which is a shame because I really enjoy using the eye autofocus in the Sony cameras. Both the Z6 and the a7 III can top our ISO 51200 natively, and like their bigger brothers, both of them have video capabilities of 4K up to 30 frames a second using the full sensor, and 1080 up to 120 frames a second. So both cameras are pretty well matched in terms of performance, with the Nikon having the slight edge in shooting speed. In terms of price, both cameras are pretty well priced as well. But I think there's a couple of areas of these Nikon cameras where I think Nikon have dropped the ball slightly, particularly with the Z6 versus the a7 III. Because we've already established the a7 III is a hugely popular camera that a lot of people are being drawn towards because of the huge specifications for such a small price. Nikon with both the Z6 and Z7 have gone with XQD cards, which are very, very fast, but they've only gone with one of them. And I think that could be a huge mistake. Now, Nikon's reasoning for this is that they say they needed to use XQD for the fast write speeds in order to handle large amounts of data that they're putting onto the card. And the camera body that they have designed physically couldn't fit two XQD card slots. Well, I am slightly baffled by this because while the Z7 has about three megapixels higher resolution than the A7R3, it also shoots a frame a second slower. So in terms of actual data throughput, the A7R3 is pretty similar to the Z7. The A7R3 gets away with using UHS-2 SD cards. So Nikon might have been better following Sony's footsteps and doing two SD card slots rather than XQD. Or maybe go with one XQD and one SD slot. Because I think a lot of professional photographers, particularly wedding photographers, need to have two memory card slots these days. They need to have that redundancy and that backup just in case something goes wrong. It's kind of expected. I mean, these are the first full-frame Nikon cameras in God knows how long. 
that don't have two memory card slots. I mean, even their mid-range APS-C cameras come with two memory card slots these days. So I think Nikon have missed a bit of a trick in only having one memory card slot. Second area that I think Nikon might have missed a trick on is with the screen. Yes, they've gone one step further than Sony in making the screen fully touch functional, but it's not fully articulating. It's the same as their DSLRs and Sony mirrorless cameras in as much as it will articulate somewhat up and down, but it will not come fully forward facing, which a lot of people have criticized the Sony cameras for not having a front facing screen. I think it's something that had Nikon done, it would have been a big deal and it would have drawn a lot of people to them potentially, but they haven't. And I think that's left the door wide open for Canon's mirrorless to have an articulating screen like they've put in the 6D Mark II. The last area that I think Nikon might have dropped the ball slightly is battery life, because mirrorless cameras are quite well renowned for poor battery life, particularly the likes of the Sony first and second generation A7s. They had absolutely atrocious battery life, and it was something that dissuaded me from moving to mirrorless until these third generations came out, because the battery in these third generations was vastly improved over the previous models. Now, the Sony a7 III is rated to about 700 shots on a charge. I've been out with a full day shooting with this camera and shot nearly 2,500 shots on a single battery and still had charge left at the end of the day, which is rivaling DSLR levels of battery life. But the reason why the battery life in these cameras is so much more improved is because the capacity of the battery has been increased. The Canon LPE6 battery that I came from, for example, has a capacity of 1800 milliamps. The Z-Type battery that Sony are now using has about 2300 milliamps, so it's about 500 milliamps more capacity. So the mirrorless cameras will draw more power because they're trying to power not only a rear LCD screen, but also an electronic viewfinder. And the higher the resolution of the viewfinder, the more power it's going to draw as well. So having a larger battery capacity offsets that difference. But what Nikon have done with these new cameras is fit them with the same battery that's found in the D750 and the D810, which is the EL15B battery. They only have a capacity of 1900 milliamps. As a result, the battery lives of the Z7 and Z6 cameras are only officially rated at 330 and 310 shots per charge. Now, like I said, you can't fully trust the official ratings because they're never exactly that but we're looking at these new nikon cameras only having half the battery life of the sony cameras and the sony cameras only just rival what a dslr does so is that going to be a deal breaker for you so overall i think for a first release of a nikon mirrorless camera i think they've done a pretty good job but it looks to me more like nikon are just trying to plug a gap and stop people from leaving their system to go over to sony rather than release a better spec camera and try and draw people over. If they'd given these cameras much better specs that completely destroyed the Sony cameras, then I think a lot of people would have shifted away. But it looks like Nikon have just wanted to stop people from moving away from them rather than draw people back over. But what do you guys think? Do you like the look of these new Nikon cameras? Are you currently a Nikon shooter and you're going to be investing in one of these cameras to use your current lenses? Or are you on a completely different system and you think you're going to move over to Nikon? Or do you think that Nikon have maybe not done quite what you were hoping for and you were hoping for something a little bit better? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.